Tennessee This Week from WATE 6 on Your Side starts now. Bill Bredesen and Marsha Blackburn, the candidates for Senate, what they are saying as the clock ticks down to Election Day. And lots of votes already cast, the impact of the big-time turnout in early voting. And our pundits' predictions for these crucial midterms coming up on Tennessee This Week. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tennessee This Week. I'm Kristen Farley. In the final week of early voting, we had a crew from our next star sister stations across the state following the candidates in what is arguably the hottest race here in Tennessee and reportedly the most expensive one in Tennessee history. Of course, we're talking about the Senate race between Marsha Blackburn and Phil Bredesen. Here are some of what the candidates had to say in the run-up to Election Day. I want to start bringing some common sense and stability and, and motion back to Washington. Um, you know, for, for anyone who likes the way it is now and likes all the partisanship and let's not move anything unless it goes all our way, um, I'm not the guy. It's, you know, there's somebody else running my opponent who's good at that, has been doing it for 16 years. I'm going to continue with my push to uh, reduce federal spending and to push for a balanced budget amendment. You know, our state has a balanced budget amend, uh, requirement and our governor and our state General Assembly cannot adjourn until they have delivered a balanced budget. And I think the federal government ought to have to do the same thing. The candidates sitting down to talk on the campaign trail about their plans and their messages to voters. All the while, the campaigns and the PACs on both sides are hammering away. Bill Bredesen wants to raise your taxes. He opposes the border wall totally. Bredesen will not defend your Second Amendment. For Blackburn, taxpayer-funded health care for life. For us, higher premiums, even priced out of coverage. We said from the get-go we were going to run positive ads, things about me, my background, accomplishments, and then we were going to run contrast ads, which would show where my opponent is on an issue and where I'm on an issue, and keep that focused on issues that are important to Tennesseans. We have done that, and people have really responded so well to that message. Now, you do have all these outside groups that you cannot talk to them, communicate with them, have anything to do with them. You have no idea what they are going to say. And I jokingly say that I flip on the TV or turn on the radio and I learn things about my supposed self every single day. I think the thing that helps me is I'm not a newcomer to this. A lot of people have known me as mayor. The whole state has known me as governor. They look at those ads and they can say, that's, I mean, that's not who that is. There have been a couple that I thought were just sort of like so so obviously 180 degrees from the mark. I mean, obviously the uh, the attacks on uh, uh, the attacks having to do with how someone was treated who was sexually harassed in my administration are just wrong by 180 degrees. I think we did exactly the right thing. We protected the privacy of the person who had the attack. We immediately got rid of the person who had uh, who had done it. So I think those are um, you know those bother me as being just straight up lies. I think also a lot of the stuff on immigration, um, I, I've certainly have responded to. I mean, I mean, we've been, we were actually fairly tough on these issues. Uh, when, uh, uh, after 9-11, when President Bush, you know, was talking about the border security and wanted some help, we volunteered. We put, we sent 1,600 National Guard troops down to the Arizona border. I went with them, uh, and I think we were, we were a lot of help down there. Uh, my predecessor had uh, done a very open driver's license thing with everyone getting driver's licenses. We worked with Homeland Security in a bipartisan way with both sides of the aisle to close those things off. So I think actually we've done, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of the really appropriate and effective kinds of things that, uh, that needed to be done in that regard. Also on the trail, Marsha Blackburn was asked about possibly being Tennessee's first female senator. You know, I have been breaking barriers for women since I was 19 years old. And without realizing what I was doing, broke a barrier that was a significant barrier and changed the way a company worked with women and uh, opened doors for women. And every time I break a barrier, whether it has been in the nonprofit world or the business world or the public service, I think this is wonderful. This is another hurdle that is knocked down and this is going to open a pathway for women to come behind me to excel and achieve and 
I many times think about it through the eyes of my daughter and her generation. Uh, they will never know some of the obstacles or, or the discrimination or diminishment or condescension or harassment that my generation has known. And it's because some of us have been very per persistent in breaking those barriers the right way. And in the wake of the Pittsburgh synagogue massacre and the mail bombings, Phil Bredesen talked about the heated rhetoric in our country and setting a positive tone. I think we've got to turn down the rhetoric. I mean, I think what happens is that you always have people on the fringes of society and fringes of craziness and these things. And I think what, what all this uh, rhetoric does and, and, you know, casting everybody as an enemy and evil who's not with you or for you on something, it just expands that circle and brings these crazies a little more into the into the mainstream and empowers them to do these kinds of things. So I can't tie any one of these acts to some thing somebody said, but certainly the conditions we've created with this this sort of you know sense of um, the other side is the enemy and is bad and is evil certainly encourages these kinds of acts, and we need to stop it. Bredesen also weighing in on the migrant caravan that we've heard so much about. It's an issue with some voters, and I understand the fear they have. It really is more of a Washington issue. I mean, there's a lot more talk in Washington about it than anywhere in the country that I've, you know, that I've been. Um, and I've tried to make the point of, look, look, I mean, don't, don't overreact to this kind of a thing. This is the most powerful country in the world. Um, and some, you know, some poor people who are coming toward the border, let's just, hand, just handle it. I mean, you've got the military, you've got the border patrol. Uh, um, if people approach the border, let's handle it in a grown-up way and um, and uh, not not obsess about it. We also heard from Marsha Blackburn. She talked about her priorities that she's hoping to tackle in the Senate. Everybody knows I'm so committed to expanding rural broadband and making certain that our rural communities have access to high-speed internet. You just can't have 21st century health care economic development or education without access to high-speed internet. I will continue that work to close that digital divide. I hear a lot from people, they know I've um, authored the legislation that puts in place a cross-state line purchase of health insurance. And with the Affordable Care Act having priced so many people out of the health insurance marketplace, making it very difficult for them. Uh, I hear a good bit from people, they will say, you keep that up because we need to be able to provide for our families to buy insurance we can afford and that really suits the needs of our family. And with President Trump set to visit Tennessee again, backing Marsha Blackburn, both talked about his presence at this point in the race. To have the president come back into the state uh, the final week of the election is just so welcome. I've invited him every time I talk to him. I say, you know, they love you in Tennessee, and we sure would like to have you back. And I was so pleased when I heard he was going to do this election week swing and visit uh, some of us in our districts and states. I just, uh, that is just so welcome. So we welcome him and we look forward to having him here to energize voters and make certain that on November 6th, they're at the polls. So what is the state of this race going into the final phase? What, what I expected when I got into this before was that it would be a very close election, that it probably would revolve around turnout and, and uh, you know some of the chances of the weather and what the issues are and those kinds of things. But that seemed to me to be a you know a bet worth taking, uh, and uh, and that's pretty much the way that it is uh, that's turned out so far. Um, I don't like to speculate about everything in advance, um, and so we'll know on uh, on Tuesday night how it worked. We know that we've got a solid ground game. Uh, we're knocking doors and making phone calls and we are continuing. I'm working 18, 20 hour days, which is what I ought to be doing at this time. And we are not leaving any in any hand untouched. We've had a tremendous ground game and just so many volunteers that are out working with us and making these contacts to their friends, their circle of friends, and making certain that they get to the polls. All right, still to come, everyone, we're taking these statements from the candidates to our pundits, and we're also getting their predictions for Election Day. Stay with us. You're watching Tennessee This Week on WATE 6 on your side.